Okay, guys, this is going to be a review for surface area. Um, let's start out with the first problem. The first problem is um, a pentagonal pyramid, and it already gives you the area of the base, which is 139.4. All you have to do is find um, these outside triangles, what the surface area of each one of those are. So we already know that to find um, the area of a triangle, you have to use base times height divided by 2. So it already gives you the base here. And on one of the triangles, it gives you the height. So you just take those two numbers, and we're going to multiply it and divide by 2. So we have 10 times 9 divided by 2, which is 45. All right, hold on, guys. i got to answer the phone. Never mind. I'm choosing not to answer that one. Okay, so... Um, to be able to find all of the triangles, this is just for one, we're going to have to multiply by how many triangles there are. So there are five triangles, so we're going to multiply by five. And five times 45 is 225. And then we have our original area of the base. Turning down the ringer until they get the hint. Um, <laughs> So you have 225, and then the area of the base is 139.4. So all you do is you add those together, because remember, surface area is the surface of whatever figure you're finding. So it's the area of the surface. So all we're going to do is we found these separately, and now we're going to add them together. So 225 plus 139.4 is 364.4. So that is the answer for number one. And now let's go on to number two. So number two, the surface area of a square pyramid is 95 square feet. So we're going to draw a square pyramid. We have the square. And then the pyramid connects to it. And it says that that surface area is 95. And then the base length is 5. So that means the 5 is the base length of the base of the pyramid, which is a square. So therefore, all of the sides are 5 because it is a square. And it says, what is the slant height? If you look on your reference sheet, the slant height formula is P. L for slant height divided by 2 plus capital B. And that all equals surface area. So we have the perimeter. The perimeter is just adding up the base perimeter. So capital P stands for the perimeter of the base, which is 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. That's 20. And then the slant height is um, what we're looking for. So we have L is the slant height. And then divide that all by 2 plus the area of the base. Well, the base is our square, and 5 times 5 is the area, which is 25. And that's all going to equal what the answer was for 95 for surface area. They already gave you the surface area. That's why we're able to find what L equals, because they gave you everything else. So 20 divided by 2 is 10L equals your 25. Oops, I'm sorry, not equals. Let me move this a little bit because this is a, getting a little bit out of control with the space. Okay, so we have, um, I like to draw a wall to be able to separate the two sides. This side has my variable on it, so I'm going to keep this side being my variable, and everything over here is going to be my numbers. So let's get rid of the numbers first. So we're going to get rid of 25, and it's adding right now, so you're going to subtract it to get rid of it. And you do that on both sides. So you're going to get 95 minus 25, which is 70, and these cancel out, and then you're going to bring down 20L divided by 2. And 20L divided by 2 is 10L equals 70, and to get L by itself, you're going to do the inverse of what it's doing now. 10 is multiplying to 11, so you're going to divide, which is the inverse of multiplying, division. If you divide on one side, you got to divide on the other. Therefore, L equals 7. So your answer is 7 feet for the slant. And I'm going to move some of this up here because 
I don't have any room to do the other problem. Okay, I'm going to let it. We'll just move this down a little bit. Oh my goodness. Now we're going all over the place. Look at what I'm grabbing. Okay, here we go. Maybe not. Ah! Alright, I'm just going to erase this one. So you can go back up and review if you need to go back to that one. Okay, so we're going to erase this a little bit, and we're going to move this back up. So number three asks us to find the surface area of this cushion. So it's a right triangular prism. How many square inches of fabric do you need to cover the cushion? So right triangular prism tells you that the base is the triangle. So you can use the formula SA equals capital P H plus 2B. And this is going to drive me nuts. Okay, so now we are going to do the perimeter of the base. So we know the base is a triangle because um, in the name it tells you triangular prism right here. So we know the base is a triangle. So the base, we're going to find the perimeter of that base. So one side is 24, one side is 7. All we need is the slant. And if you look over here, they give you the slant, which is 25. So you're going to add up 24 plus 25 plus 7, and that gives you 56. And then the height is the height of the prism. So it's the height of the entire prism. And like I told you in class today, think of this like a loaf of bread. This end is one end of the loaf of bread. This is the other end. To tell you what the height of the loaf of bread is, you're going to travel this distance between one end of the bread to the other end of the bread. And that distance is the line right here that I'm pointing to, 26. So that's the height of that prism. And then you bring down your 2, which is in the formula. And then the area of the base is a triangle. And we know the area of a base for a triangle is base times height divided by 2. So our base is 7. Our height is 24. So we're going to have 7 times 24 divided by 2. And then you're going to put it all together. So you have 56 times 26, which is... 1,456 and 2 times the 7 times 24 divided by 2 so do 7 times 24 divided by 2 first 7 times 24 is 168 divide that by 2 you get 84 so 2 times the 84 then this is 168 and add it to your 1,456 And you get 1,624, and the unit is inches, and we are doing surface area, so it's squared. And let's move on to number four. Number four was um, pretty simple. You just had to identify two things that would be not this line. What line did you come from? Okay, there we go. Let's do it in green. All right, so we have the base that you have to identify, and we have the solid that you have to identify. So the base is the circle on the bottom. And if you looked at your reference sheet, you could see that this is a cone if you were unsure. And I would just accept the word cone. You don't have to write right circular cone, which is on your reference sheet. Cone is, is acceptable, and that's all you do for number four. Number five is finding the surface area of a cylinder. So if you made the net, your net would look like a circle with a rectangle and then another circle down here. Dozen roses. And your diameter is 24. And then your height is the same height of the rectangle. So that's 16. So you have meters, and meters. So you can use the formula, which is SA equals capital P H plus 2 capital B. So the perimeter is your pi D, 
because remember the perimeter of a circle is this outer measurement, which is the circumference, and to find the circumference you do pi d. And then the height is the height of the prism, it's 16, plus 2, and then your area of the base is your pi r squared. So let's see if I have room to write pi r squared in here. I do. Okay, so pi d is 3.14 times your diameter, that's 24, times 16, plus 2, I'm going to bring this down here, let me erase this and write down more, okay, we have, let's move this a little bit, the last time I did this it made it all wishy-washy, okay, that's better. Okay, um, so we have 3.14, let's just make a wall so we know this is separating. 3.14 times 24 times 16 plus 2, and pi r squared is pi r squared, so we have 3.14 times your radius, so that's the diameter, so we have to go halfway. So half of 24 is 12, that's 12 squared, so 144. And 3.14 times 144. All right, this is kind of messy. I don't really like how messy this is, so let me move this over a little bit. I want to be able to show you clearly, and because I can't stop my video, you get my video with some mistakes in it. So, shows you that I'm human. Okay, so if we were to write over here, your 3.14 times your 12 squared, then you're going to multiply all of those together on each side of the addition sign. So 3.14 times 24 times 16. So 3.14 times 24 times 16 is 1,205.76 plus, then you're going to multiply this, this side, and remember 12 squared is 12 times 12. So that is 12 times 12, which is 144, times 3.14 times 2, and that's 904.32. And then you add them together. So I already had 904.32 in the calculator, so I just add 1,205.76, and that's 2,110.08. And it's meters squared. So cylinder is a little bit more complicated. Let's go down to number six. All right, number six, all four faces of a pyramid with a triangle, triangular base are identical equilateral triangles. So a triangular base, and it's a pyramid, so that means there's a triangle coming off each side of the triangle base. And it says the total lateral surface area is 42 square feet. Lateral surface area means the surface around the outside, so left to right. So if you think about a soup can label, if you think about a soup can like this, the label that goes around the soup can on the outside here only goes around the edges. It doesn't go around the top and it doesn't go around the bottom. It's just going to go around the edges. So if you think about this pyramid, you're only going to go around the sides of the pyramid. So that sides of the pyramid for lateral surface area equals first uh, 42. So the lateral surface area, so we'll just call it LSA, equals 42 for lateral surface area, equals 42 square feet. So that means these three triangles all equal 42. That's not including the base. So to find how, how much total there are, you have to find out how much 1 equals. So if we know that 3 equals 42, we have to find out how many 1 equals. So if that's 3x equals 42, because three of the triangles equal 42, we have to solve for x. So that means we divide by three. 
and we find out that x equals 14. So each triangle is going to be worth 14. So that's 14, 14, 14, 14. So 14 times 4, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, will give you the answer. And 14 times 4 is 56. So our answer to this problem is 56 feet, because that's back in our problem up here, squared. So the total surface area of this pyramid is 56 square feet. Now let's move on to number 7. Number 7 looks complicated, but it actually isn't. Number seven, you're gonna find each surface area separately and then add them together. And then you're gonna subtract the two that are touching, which are right here. So you have this one that's touching and then down here at the bottom, you're losing that bottom one that's touching. Okay, so you have um, one of them. So let's, let's draw them separately, that might help. So we have the small one in the center And this one side is one. Let's change the color. This is one. This is three. And the height is four. Okay, so if we were to do this one, let's just designate this upper level is going to be the small one, and the bottom one's going to be this, the big one to find the answer. Okay, so we have. Um, S A equals capital P H plus two capital B. So the perimeter of the base, we can use this base right here. That's three plus one plus the three over here plus the one over here. So that's eight plus the height, which is four. That's the height of the prism plus two and then capital B, which is the area. So that's three times one. And then you multiply across. So you have 32 plus six which is 38. So that's the surface area of the small one. So then if you do the large one, I'm just gonna draw this smaller because I don't wanna waste room by drawing the figure. So even though it's not necessarily large in the picture, we can know that that's just the large one that we're representing. All right, so this is four again, because it's the same. And the base of this is six. And then the width will be four this way. So we have height, base, and now we need the width, which we can do as over here. So we have the perimeter of the base. So we have SA equals capital P H plus two capital B. So the perimeter of the base, we can use this base. So we have four plus six, and this side must be six. And the opposite side over here must be four. So four plus six is 10 and the other side is 10, so that's 20. And perimeter is just walking around the edges like you're gonna put a fence around the edges. How much length do you need for the fence? And then the height is the height of the prism. So this rectangle, like a loaf of bread, travels to the other end of the loaf of bread, and that line that it travels is four. And then plus two, and we're doing a loop-de-loop -loop with my marker. There we go. And the area of the base is length times width. So you have, this was the base that we chose to use. So four times six, so that's 24. And then you're gonna do the multiplication and add them together. So 20 times four is 80. And two times 24 is 48. Add them together and you get 128. So now you have these two figures separated and you're going to add them together first. So you have 128 plus 38, and you're gonna add them together. So that's 6, 10, and then six, and then one. So you get 166. Now that's not one of your choices because the surface area, remember, you're getting rid of the surface area for the small one. You're getting rid of the surface area for the large one in this same spot. And then down here on the bottom, you don't have the surface area of the bottom one anymore. So um, this picture is a little bit deceiving so you have to either do it two ways and see which answers come, up, come out. So technically right now you can see that this has a hole, so you're gonna subtract two of them. We're not sure if this base has a hole as well, 
So we'll subtract two first and see if we get the answer, and then we're going to subtract a third one to see if that will, you have to subtract this bottom one, because this, if it's a hole all the way through, it should be dark down here. But I'm thinking it's not, so we might have to subtract a third. So let's look and see um, 166. So we have this little space that we have to subtract because when you put these two together, this small one's fitting inside it and, and taking away that hole in the middle right there. So that's not there anymore for the surface. You can't touch it, it's gone. So three times one is the area of that, which is three. And we're gonna times it by two to get rid of the one from the small one and the one from the large one, which is six. And if we subtract that, minus six, we end up getting 160. And 160 square feet is in the answer. Now, if you look up here, if we subtract one more three, we get 157. So the base of this down here is on this large one. It is there. But the um, base of the small one is not there anymore. So let me check one thing. Hold on one second. Okay, so it is a hole all the way through. I was just checking the answer key to make sure. So this is a hole all the way through. So actually, when you subtract the top one, this is a hole all the way through. So it's kind of like a bead, if you think about it like that. You can put a string through this middle. So you have already subtracted the top, but now we have to subtract one more six at the bottom because we have the base little part, part that this is taken away of the big one and then the base of the small one. So you're going to subtract another six. So when you subtract another six, you end up getting 154 because you had to subtract these two tops and these two bottoms for the areas. And you get 154 and it's 154 square feet. I'm going to erase this a little bit so I don't have that bleeding into number eight. So you're going to, for this one, you have to subtract the top two and then the bottom two because those are gone. And that would leave you the rest of the surface area because technically if we were to paint this, we could still paint in the inside, which is the surface. You can still touch it. So you can paint the outside. You can paint the top except for this little section. You can paint the bottom except for this little section. And you can paint on the inside. So that's why you have to subtract the top two here and the bottom two here from the big one and the small one. That's two. Big one, small one, that's two. So that's where you get 154 from. Let's go on to number eight. Whoa. Nelly. Okay, number eight, you can use the formula. So you have SA equals PH plus 2B. Perimeter of the base, so you have 6 and then 3 for the height over here. So if 3 is here, 3 is here, and 6 and 6. So 6 plus 3 is 9, plus the other 9 is 18. And then the height is the height that it travels from one of the bases to the other base. And that travel is 14. And then 2 times the area of the base, and the space is 6 times 3, which is 18. And 18 times 4 is 72. And 2 times 18 is 36. And 36 plus 72 is 108. And that's not an answer. What did we do wrong? Hold on, I don't think I did my multiplication right. 14 times 18. Yeah, that's where I did it wrong. Must have typed in the calculator wrong. Oops, okay. So this should be 18, just rewriting it because I just erased it. 18 times 14 is 252. And 252 plus 36 is 288. And that's millimeters squared. So that would be D. Number nine, you're finding the lateral, sur find the lateral surface area of the cylinder below. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. So we are finding, if we were to make a net, we're finding this rectangle. So we have the radius is five. 
and the height of this rectangle is 6. So this is like a can of soup and you're just taking the label off. So there's the label. So you're finding only the label for lateral surface area because it's like wrapping it around. You're only finding left to right on the figure. So um, lateral surface area is like latitudinal lines that are on a globe. They only go left and right or east and west. So um, when you're doing that, you have to find their circumference in order to find what this length is. Because when you unwrap this, this little edge goes down to the corner here, and this edge would lay down here, and that gives you the length. So to find that, you have pi d, which is circumference. So 3.14 times the diameter. If the radius is 5, the other side to connect it would be 5. Oh, so that's 10. Sorry, guys. A bell is going to ring soon, and I'm trying to get this done. All right, so that's 10. So 3.14 times 10 is 31.4. So that means this length is 31.4. So to find the area of this label, which is what we're looking for, is 31.4 times 6. So let's write that over here. 31.4 times 6, which equals 188.4. And that's meters squared. So that would be D. Let's move on to number 10. All right, number 10 is like number 7. So number 10, you're going to break it apart and find each shape and then subtract two bases. So you have the pyramid, which equals capital PH plus 2B. So the perimeter of the base, so that's 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, which is 20. And the height of the pyramid, which is 4, plus 2 times the area of the base, which is 5 times 5 times 5, which is 25. So 80 plus 50, which is 130. That's for the pyramid. Now if you do the bottom, you get capital P which is the perimeter of the base, so that's 5 plus 5 plus 5 again, so that's 20. The height of that rectangular prism, which is 4. And the area of the base is 5 times 5, which is 25. Oh, wait a minute. I don't like the way that this pyramid is. Okay, so I was thinking you could do it this way. So the rectangular prism down below, this is 80, and this is 50. So that's fine with 130. But up here, you actually have to find each rectangle, or each triangle by itself. So the base is 5 of the, of the triangle, and then the height is 4. Divide that by 2. So 20 divided by 2 is 10, and there are 4 of them, 4 triangles, so that's 40. And then you have the base, which is 5 times 5, is 25. So you add those together and you get 60, or 65. So 130 plus 65 is 195. And then you have to subtract two of these bases, which um, are gone when you glue those together. So that's 5 times 5, which is 25, and we're subtracting two of them. So 25 times 2 is 50. And when you subtract that, you get 145, and it's meters squared. Number 11, I'm not going to do with you because it's actually, um, I'll explain it really quickly. I've got like 15 seconds, but what I was going to tell you is find the surface area of each of these boxes, multiply it by 900, and then subtract the two to find the savings. And that is it for this tutorial. Um, make sure you stop and listen for the word. I just finished just in time. All right, I will... Um, give you the chapter test tomorrow, so make sure you study. Good luck.